Hi there and welcome back to Japan where today I'm going to be giving you my review of Tokyo Singing, the most recent album by Wagaki Man. And anyone who's been following this channel or the previous one will know that I am really, really into this band's sound, so I was excited to check this out. But as always on this channel, we're honest. We tell the truth about what we think. And so this was the first time I'd actually sat down to listen to a full Wagaki Band album because of the fact that our new format allows me to do that without spoiling anything. So I sat down, I listened to it many times. I took it walking with me. I took it to the shops with me. I had intense sitting down and listening sessions with it. And I came to my conclusion. So here's what I thought. Tokyo Singing is an album that poses quite an interesting question about the nature of Wagaki Band's sound. From the outset, it's awash with the band's beautiful layered sounds, mixtures of Suzuhana's amazing voice, heavy rock undertones, and Japanese instruments all swirling around perfectly. It's a skill that I don't think that the band gets enough credit for, honestly. It's virtually impossible to think of one of Wagaki Band's songs that actually sounds messy, in spite of all the myriad of sounds they weave together. I've compared them previously to being like an orchestra, where the sum is more than the total of its individual parts, and yet at the same time each individual part stands out in its own tonal glory with these guys. I mean, the rock drums and taiko drumming, they complement each other without getting messy. The koto, shamisen and shakuhachi, they pick their moments to accent the arrangement subtly or push forwards for impact. The guitar and bass work underline the traditional instruments, but never actually themselves feel weak or sidelined, considering the large arrangements that they find themselves in. There's always that impact, there's always that subtle detail as well, and there's no doubt that the band's sound just works. However, this achievement does pose something of an interesting issue for Tokyo Singing as an album. The 14-track gloriously detailed feast for the years requires that you approach it quite hungry to begin with. There's no casual snack of a listen going on here, and for the diversity of sound on offer, there is a lack of that sort of quiet simplicity you'd expect from traditional Japanese music and even Yuko Suzuhana's live stream rep repertoire. Um, there's always kind of like eight people playing at any given time, and however well woven together the songs are, it leaves you without much room to breathe. Now, Queen of the Night is a notable exception, which when I reviewed it as a single, I credited it for its spacious sound that gave you the chance to appreciate the tones of Wagaki Band's instrumental building blocks more so than I think we really had been able to on any of their previous singles. I loved it as a single, with a beautiful refrain and tone, but on the album it also serves us with one of the few chances to catch your breath. It's no secret to anyone who's been following this or the previous YouTube channel that I both adore Wagaki Band's sound in practice and in concept. I've long been an advocate of the idea that Japanese instruments work beautifully with a hard rock sound, as many of the sounds of such instruments are tight and impactful, as well as being quite trebly for the best part, or you get the boom of the taiko drum. Either way, that leaves a lot of room for rock guitar work in the mid-range frequencies to just sort of fit in perfectly. However, hearing such a thick and wonderful sound constantly, like eating nothing but your favourite ice cream all day, can get a bit much, and Tokyo Singing's diversions from the norm end up being some of its most unexpected highlights. Ignite, for example, which I'd previously given a warm but not ecstatic review to, became one of the songs I look forward to most on repeat listens. Posted in the track 2 slot, it nonetheless serves as a fun variation with heavy guitar riff focused arrangement, lending a simple chord to the song and an impact that immediately sort of grabs your ear. As a single, I had found it a little lacking in catchiness or memorable qualities, but as an album track, its strong points of impact energy and good flow suddenly stood out much stronger, suddenly pumped you up for the rest of the album really well, which is actually a really good quality for an early track in the set list. I even had a similar change of heart towards Sakura Rising in its album setting, although I must admit that where Ignite has grown on me over time, Sakura Rising not as much, it just feels sort of more in place as an album track than as a single. However, the fun vocal play between Yuka and Amy Lee, along with some really slick and tasty production, does make this something of a sonic highlight of the album. I just still maintain that it doesn't feel like it comes together in a rewarding hook or crescendo, despite the brooding and building nature of the piece. But it serves up another flavour on the album, another flavour on this journey, and that's something which, again, as an album track, is a really great thing. Now, the final track, which I think is just pronounced Rocky, 
was a fantastic ending that reminded me of why I had actually previously enjoyed their song Aparega Segi. Excuse my pronunciation. <laughs> Rocky being very similar in tone to that earlier piece. It just felt like a really happy and joyous way to end the album. For all the intense and hard music in the first half and a little bit in the second half too, this was a final note of joy and a demonstration of the carnival-like atmosphere that Japanese music can have when that sense of fun is thrown in. It left me feeling very much like the album was a complete and finished experience by the end. And each time I got to the end, I also had a bit of a smile on my face as well. So that's got to be credited considering, like I say, it is quite a big, long album to get through in many ways. Now, Wagaki Man have produced a wonderful album here, as I say, in quite a few different ways, with Singing For being a great lead single that felt like a sort of Olympic anthem, and still does. Even if the games don't go ahead this year, or indeed at all, the song leaves me feeling almost like they actually had. And it's best Tokyo singing kind of achieves exactly that. It's such a wonderfully full and accomplished album, awash with the beautiful sounds of Japan, with a roaring rock energy as well. I would argue that it could play to its strengths more by having lost a couple of tracks to B-side or bonus track status maybe, in order to produce a more concise and balanced experience, but, you know, it's still a pretty big and exciting album nonetheless, and having too much can't exactly be the worst thing. It's not that the album really has any low points though, but its moments of exceptional quality could have been better brought closer together. However, I can only continue to be pleased that this band actually still exists and has such a first to produce material. It's a, so rare to find a band who are doing something genuinely unique in the mainstream and even rarer to find them genuinely excelling at it. Therefore, any Wagaki band album that carries their hallmarks forward is a reason to celebrate. I certainly hope that they continue to be playful with their dynamic and their sound though. Songs like Synchronicity, Ignite, Aparega Sege, I will get the right. And even Sakurizing shows sort of willingness to experiment with their sound. And if they continue to offer such generous album lengths, I certainly hope to see them use these spaces to lean into that experimentation a little bit more at points as well. It is some of their best material when they do something kind of unexpected. But for better or worse, it's always exciting to play with new ideas. So especially when you've got such a wealth of talent in your lineup, I do hope that they continue to experiment as well as just doing that core sound that is so iconically well performed by them. Therefore, I leave Tokyo singing very happy to have experienced an album that reflects a great band. Um, I don't know if it's really bite-sized or varied enough to warrant me giving it extensive re-listens, but I certainly will visit it every now and then when I want a good old-fashioned sensory overload of wonderful Japanese tones, and I would absolutely recommend it to anyone for a try, even if just the one time. So yeah, if you're someone who's already a bit of a Wagaki Band fan, I think you're going to find this to be a good smattering of what you already like. And to be honest, you've probably already heard the album by now <laughs> if you're watching this and you're already a Wagaki Band fan. However, if you're more of a casual fan or someone who doesn't really know, who just maybe wants to get to know their sound, I would perhaps suggest maybe start listening with the singles, get a little bit of a taste for that first. It is quite, like I say, quite a big, fantastic listen. I'm sure that if you do like their sound, you're going to love this album. However, it might be a bit of a heavy place to jump on the train for a first time listener to them. So as always, those are my opinions on this. I, um, I, I'm going to be sort of popping in and out of a few of these tracks, just sort of you know, gauging my feelings towards them over the coming months. And I do hope that I'll have a few sit down listens with the whole album as well when I'm in kind of right mood for it. But I want to know what you guys think now, whether you be a fan or not, if you've listened to this album or if you're curious from what I've been saying and you've got some thoughts about some of the singles or anything, do get into the comments and tell me what you think as well. Obviously, music is only as good as it is to the listener. It's a subjective art form. I can give objective generalizations, but you tell me what you think and try to justify those opinions. Opinions. I speak as someone who's worked with music my entire adult life, but you might well be able to point out something that would have gone straight over my head or just see it from a different way. So get in there, tell me what you think. Remember the liking and subscribing and all the YouTube-y stuff is really appreciated too. Big thank you to anyone who follows our social medias linked in the description below, especially to anyone who follows our Patreon. We're not monetized. You guys are the lifeblood of this whole operation. So thank you so much for 
everything that you give to us. And thank you for making it through to the end of this waffly old video. So until I hopefully see you very soon in Japan for the next one of these, for now, ciao, ciao.